Okay. Yeah, there we go. I think we are live. We are getting there, little by little. Hello, everyone. Danny and Wanda from the Deep South Homestead. And I am trying to do this without totally messing it up tonight. <laughs> I'm just being patient, sitting back. He's waiting on me to mess up, y'all. All okay. right. I'm finishing my cookie, y'all. Just gonna have to give me a minute. Yeah, we're kind of running late here. Uh, oh. These are homemade cookies. Sort of, kind of. Well, they're homemade, but not with homemade ingredients. I took a cake mix, two eggs, uh, about a third of a cup of oil, and a little bit of oatmeal, and a little bit, I don't know, I didn't measure. I, I just put a couple of little handfuls in there. Yeah. And then I finished off a jar of jelly. It was uh, Mayha jelly, I think. And I put a couple of tablespoons of Mayha jelly in it. They are good. They is good. All right, so what you been doing? Oh. Oh, they like the new background. Oh. Y'all, doesn't that look like a... You're looking out a window. Look like you're looking out a window here. And uh, I got to show this picture. If y'all are on Patreon, I was giving y'all a clue today. Oh, uh, what kind of clue was you giving them? Over at Pecan Grove. Where is it? There you go. That's what it looks like there. That's Pecan Grove you're looking at. And y'all... This right here reminds me of it. It reminds me of looking out that, that, looking at that. And y'all look. Danny told me to take a picture so y'all believe me. Look at that. That's my hand, so That's yeah. That's Wanda's hand. I had radishes. Ah, uh, Susie Q said I dug my carrots today. We dug a few. Mudcat says, any advice on fighting nutgrass? We actually have nutgrass in our Danny corn. And, Tambra made my carrot salad. And it is horrible. To, it, hogs is the only way I've ever heard of to deal with nutgrass. Is put hogs in there, and they'll usually clean it up. We just started, Ronald. It's, it, uh, we're starting at 8 o'clock Central Time. So I don't know where you're at, but 8 o'clock Central. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks like you're looking out a bay window. Y'all can only yard. see these yeah. two, but there's two more panels here. Yeah, there's actually, yeah, and, uh, way out further. It looks like it's a bay window and like you're looking out. And I told Danny, I, I bought it back in November, I believe, or somewhere along in there. And uh, I never took it out of the package till today. And when I did, I looked at it and I said, this looks like Pecan Grove. It looks like we're looking out pecan grove from where the cows are and everything and he said that's that's it. it that's what it looks like yeah so mudcat says it's in his sweet corn it's in my danny corn uh it, it's bad you know i mean but let me tell you let me give you some uh some hope okay when the corn gets up and gets to going really good and, and it starts shading the ground, the nutgrass really doesn't get enough sunlight to actually do anything, you know, hardly. So it, it's, it, it does help when it gets shaded in the corn. Gail Hooper, um, she said she made it on a fir her first live, but Gail, you are one of the only people I've seen spells their name the way I do. My mama spelt my middle name Gail, G-A-Y-L-E, and you don't see that very often. Well, G-A-I-L is a boy's name. No, there's girls named Gail that way, too. I mean, all the boys I know named Gail spell their name that way. Now, I forgot there's boys named Gail. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. the, word, the girls I knew was G-A-Y-L-E. I think my mama said she saw it on a boat, and it was printed G-A-Y-L-E on a boat. So you were, don't named, ask you were named after a boat? <laughs> I think that's what she told me. Oh, wow. I don't remember. I think that's what she okay. said. Um, okay. Okay. Um, let's see here if I can find anything. Um, are the cicadas coming to Georgia this year? Renee. Renee says, you know what? This is the year, supposedly, for 
grasshoppers and cicadas to be in record amounts everywhere. Y'all, I bet Danny don't know what today is. Today is 10 years ago. Nope. What, 11 years? 11 years. Okay, I'm 10 or 11. <laughs> today is 11 years ago that Ms. Wanda and I actually met face to face. Yep. And that picture was taken at church. At, church. at the church yeah. he was going to at the time. That was... Uh, I didn't know if he'd remember... Actually, the only way I remembered was it popped up my Facebook feed. That picture did. But if I'd have seen the date, I would have remembered. Yeah. Oh. Because I don't ever forget this date. Let's see here. Danny, do you plant your corn rows north, south, east, or west? Uh, mine is east and west. Uh, right now, that's the, that's the direction they're in. I get more sun exposure that way. And plus, it's the way the field's laid out, you know what I mean? So, uh, it is what it is. Is there a difference between deer corn and dent corn, Ms. Darling wants to know? Uh, no, there's no difference between deer corn and dent corn. Deer corn can be any corn. And it, uh, it also, this triple cr cleaned a lot of uh, your grist mills, use it to yeah, make a, grits a, and corn meal. A yeah. A lot of people go, and, it, and and this is in our area now, I don't know about where y'all live at, but a lot of people around here goes to the feed stores and gets a triple cleaned, or they go to Walmart or hardware stores, and they buy this triple cleaned corn, which means nothing more than it's been, I had the co cobs blowed out of it and the dust blowed out of it. It's still genetically modified, and they're grinding that stuff up with these grist mills and selling them bags of for grits and cornmeal for people. And it's nothing but genetically modified corn. Same corn fed the deer. Mm-hmm. All right. Sassafras said that they bought a nutcracker like yours and have tried it for hours to just tap it to, tap it to crack the pecans. They just want to shatter all to pieces. Have you any suggestions on what I should do to get halves? If you bought a nutcracker like I got it, mine's sitting right over here. Mine never break. Mine don't ever shatter. You have to adjust the, you screw the thing out of the back of it so that when the handle <coughs> comes down, it it only <laughs> mashes the nut just a certain amount so it just pops it. It don't crush it, you know. Old Dominion said they just watched the video of you cutting my hair. Actually, there's two videos out there where he cut it twice. Yeah. Um, the first time he called it a horse's tail. I did. I did. <laughs> and he cut it like that. He just held the whole thing up and just cut straight just cut it across. Right off. Then I lifted it up and I said, you know what's under every horse's tail? <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, oh. How can I cheaply open my black walnuts? Those things are hard to crack. Uh, a vice. Uh, the easiest way to open up a black walnut is in a vise. Uh, and it's end to end, not sideways, but end to end. Put it in a vise and just tighten it very slowly. And it'll when it pops, that's, uh, we crack ours that way. I mean, that's the easiest way I found. George Smith says, any suggestions to keep squirrels out of his corn? Mine got destroyed last year. Uh, George, we're using, uh, if you've watched our videos, we have ribbons hanging across our fields uh, to keep the crows out. And that has worked really, really well. And last year, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. Now, last year, I eradicated 62 squirrels out from around my cornfield. <laughs> and I felt like that by well, thinning that them out. that was actually pecans, too. The well, pecan was, they were after my there. pecans. Because my pecan trees was all around the cornfield, and by eradicating them out of the pecans, I kept them out of the corn. Yeah. We still see some. They're, they're not gone. Tamper says, uh, oh, we're, oh, a few of my tater plants are starting to bloom. Do I pull them? Uh, no, 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 no. Wait till your tater plants start dying before you actually uh, get rid of any of them. Uh, let's see. Is rabbit, oh, who is that? Where you at? Is rabbit manure good for fruit trees? 
Yes, rabbit manure is really, really good for fruit trees. Miss Wanda used to put some around our, uh, was it orange trees? I did the oranges and the pecans. Yeah, oranges and pecans, and then both of them just took off and done fantastic. And the fig. Remember, Grandpa's yeah. fig wouldn't do anything. Right. And, and uh, his pecan trees wasn't doing anything, and I started uh, dumping the rabbit manure around the base of them, and plus, when I washed out my bins, I would take that water and dump around them. So yeah. they got the, the tea also, and his pecan trees shot up that first year twice as big as they were. The oranges had produced like crazy, and Grandpa's fig grew about three times what it always has, and it's been producing yeah. ever since. Sheila D. says, Danny, why are my onions falling over after I pull dirt away from the bulbs so they could bulb? Uh, maybe you pulled it away from them too quickly. Uh, the bulb needs to be around an inch or, or a little bigger than an inch or inch and a half in diameter before you need to start pulling dirt away from it. Uh, if you pull it away from it too quickly, uh, there's just not enough substance there to keep it from falling over. Uh, Miss Bertha said to look up the benefits of squeezing lemon juice on spinach. I have to do that. Oh, that's interesting. I cooked interesting. some spinach today. Ooh, she cooked some spinach and some chicken today with a little piece I of the chicken. I sauteed my onions down, and then when they got kind of done, brown looking, I threw the spinach in there and let it just wilt down. And I had some chicken that was... Uh, already cooked i just chopped it up in small bites threw it over in there and, and heated it all up and we ate that and it was delicious it was delicious so y'all can eat spinach a lot of different ways yeah all right where are we at oh uh, will goat manure work around pecan trees yes it will but uh tell him why you killed our uh but goat manure, if you've been Tree. feeding, if you've fed the goats any kind of hay that has been sprayed with Grazon, Remedy, 2,4-D, or and any of these. And he killed our best peach I tree. I killed our best peach tree, and I messed up one of our apple trees mm -hmm. uh, by putting goat manure around it that had these in it because it's a, it has an amino prylid in it from, gray, from, from the Grazon it was used on the hay, and it kills anything that's a broadleaf. So... Uh, just be aware, make sure your goats have not had hay that's had any of those chemicals used in it. Uh, Catwoman wants to know, well, she took it away. She took it away right when you was fixing to read Best it. Best fertilizer for something, and I forgot what it was. I was reading it as it disappeared. Okay. How long does it take for Malabar spinach to pack, pock its head up, poke its head up, I'm guessing. They're having problems. I didn't it's have not, any problems with Malabar not, it, spinach. It's not warm enough up. right now for Malabar spinach. Yeah, it's got to be a little bit warm. It's got to be warmer. Now, if you have it in a warm, like under a heat lamp or something, that, or on a heat pad, it might pop up faster. Oh, uh, um, let's see here. Where am I at? Oh, uh, Miss Nadia got her Vego bed today. Ms. Or yesterday. Na yesterday. Yesterday. I told you last yeah, night, didn't I? Yeah, you told me last and night, Miss Nadia. Said, uh, she said she was supposed to have her husband help her put it together so she can start growing. I'm sure she's and, excited uh, about that. And talking about the Vago beds, uh, why don't we talk for just a moment? Y'all hold up on your comments there unless you just want to keep chatting with each other. But uh, about the new kids' Vago beds. We, we, yeah. we got two of the children's uh, Vago beds. They're two by three and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of incentives for a lot of you. A lot of you all say you cannot afford the Vago beds. Well, Vago has a program out right now. It's a kids program. It's a kids program. Now, if you've got children or if you have grandkids, I would advise you if you cannot afford the Vago beds to go check that program out because you can get them pretty economical. Yeah, uh, right now this weekend they're on sale for eighty nine dollars, and You'll have to pay the $89, but when you get your bed and you have your order receipt, you sign up your uh, kids, grandkids, whatever, and um, you sign them up on the program and they send you activity sheets and stickers and things for the kids. And once you sign them up, you show your kids, you take pictures of the kids planting, 
and you post it on your Facebook or Instagram or whatever you do, Twitter or whatever, and you have hashtags to put on there, then you send a consent form so that because they can't use your kids' pictures in their uh, program book that they have for kids unless they have a consent. They want to know how tall they are. 17 inches tall. 17, just like ours. 17 inches. Yeah. And uh, I think this weekend, some of their beds, it says if you order beds, I don't know if the kid's bed is included in this. I didn't read that far, but I know if you order a Vago bed this weekend, you get two free seedlings. A lot of the beds are on sale. Some of them are on sale like just a little bit, 10%. Some may be 20. Some are as much as 40% off. But I don't, it, it's just select ones. But I know the kids' bed was like 40% off. It was $89 right now. When you sign them up and they get that back, that consent form and the pictures and everything, they turn around and reimburse you $50. You're welcome, Wild Turkey. So I think that's a pretty good deal. You get the $50 off. So you're paying $59 for a three and a half by two by three and a half. Two foot by three and a half yeah. foot, yes. So 17 inches high. You know, and you can grow a good bit of little stuff in those too. It's a, it's a get started for kids type thing. Nick Willis says, is 10, 30, 20 good for okra? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a that's that's pretty good for okra. Um, losing uh, your glasses. I'm losing my glasses here, guys. Fell out fell off of the edge of the table here. Uh, okay. Um, is there something else I needed to show them? I, I'm trying. Okay. To um, did we pick up anything this week from the post office? Yes. Go get your. <laughs> What did, what did corn thing there, yeah. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Yeah, Miss Wanda got a gift this week from a lady. And we do not want to miss showing that. And I forgot. I got five. Uh, you might as well talk to a five. Okay. Stuff. Okay. Let me look here and see if I can get up with some of you guys. Miss Wanda's not here to bother me right now. What if, uh, what if we can't do Facebook or social media so it's out for us. Uh, I don't know what Aaron's talking about there. So the kids program. Oh, the kids program. Okay. Um, I have grub worms in my new green stalk. Well, you need to get them out of there because they'll eat the roots up on it. Um, this may sound silly, according to Shane, says, but can you plant sweet potatoes close to potatoes? Yes, because sweet potatoes is not actually a potato, believe it or not. Uh, sweet potatoes is in the morning glory family. And potatoes are not in the Morning Glory family. So, yes, you can plant them both side by side. Um, let's see here. Will grass clippings add nitrogen to my pots? Yes, only if they're green, though. Not not dead ones, but green ones. Green ones will, as a matter of fact, be careful because it'll put a lot of nitrogen in your pot. Okay, it is from Miss Lorraine. Miss Lorraine wrote me and says, I make miniatures for dollhouse for a for yeah, the dollhouse yeah. industry. And I thought you might enjoy an addition to your candy corn collection. Mm -hmm. So this is what she sent me. Miss Lorraine sent this. Check this see out. If I can get it up here where y'all can see it. This is a this is can this is a candy corn, a dollhouse size candy corn collection. Yeah. And she put it in this little what do you call it? I forgot what she called it. But anyway, it's a showcase. It's a showcase, yes. Yes. And I'm talking, y'all look. It looks like candy corn. She's got it down to the yellow and the orange. And she did an awesome job. So thank you, Miss Lorraine, on that. And uh, I got a, a letter from Jennifer. Sorry, S-A-R-R-I. She visited us one time. Sorry. And Jim and Lori Bosch. And, uh, did I already show, oh, I think I already showed this. I might have. Not sure. Yes, the yes, blue bonnets. Yes, the blue bonnets you did. Yeah, I you did. showed the blue bonnets, yes. Okay, so I'm, I'm backtracking. Okay. From Miss Let's see Nancy. here. Okay, that was okay, it. Okay, boy, they're zipping by here. I, uh, let's see here. They said that is cute. It's beautiful. Yeah, I haven't had any, uh, Dollhouse can't can that's the one candy corn she hasn't had. Yeah, the dollhouse candy corn is wonderful <laughs> Yeah, the 
I haven't had any collection to my candy corn in a long time, so this at is a new, new one for me. Uh, Jennifer Sanders says, our urologist said avoid spinach at all costs. It creates kidney stones. Uh, that's a yes and a no. It is loaded with oxalates, and it's only for people who are prone to kidney stones. Now, not everybody has kidney stones, okay? Uh, I've eaten spinach a lot of my life. I've had kidney stones. I quit eating spinach. I still have kidney stones. Most kidney stones comes from dehydration if they're of the uric acid type. Uh, that's what we found out with me. Too much sugar and dehydration is, and I had cut out coffee, tea, all leafy greens and everything, and I was still having kidney stones. And come to find out, it was simply because my body was dehydrating and all the heat and the sweat that I was doing. Okay, so CO Foothills says, curious, why the backdrop cloth background? Well, we had white doors behind us, and the light was reflecting and hitting yeah. and creating issues on those on white. And so we kept trying different things to tone down. And well, the camera would focus too. The camera, the camera, the camera yeah. won't focus if you don't have something behind you that it can focus up against. Like if I take my hand and I run up here to the camera like that, and then I come back away from it. It changes everything. So you have to have, and lighting is everything, and we don't have a lot of fancy lighting, guys. No, because you can see on my glasses. I, I mean, I don't when know I how pick to, these glasses up, see the... I don't know how to de defer the lighting where I don't have it on my glasses. I don't know how to do that. Um, What's your favorite way to cook and eat sweet potatoes? Woo! Sweet potato fries. Sweet potato fries, uh, sweet potato desserts, sweet, baked pota sweet, baked potato. sweet potatoes, fried sweet potatoes. I don't care. Sweet, sweet potatoes with marshmallows on top of them. Stir fry with onion. Y'all would. Most people think I'm crazy, but I saute down onions and bell peppers, and then I turn around and throw my shredded sweet potatoes in white there. White sweet potatoes, now. It can be either one. But the white ones do better. No, I like because the they're hard. They're harder. They 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 go mushy. Yeah, they the sweet the red yeah. ones go mushy on. But you. I like sweet potatoes sautéed in onions and bell peppers. Yeah. It is, you have to try it. Don't say I don't like it. Try it. Try I promise it. It's you. It's really, you like really it. good. Okay, we, it jumped. Uh, how's the onions and garlic looking? The onions and the garlic are coming. I actually saw one's got a little bulb started about that big around. Now, uh, the garlic. <laughs> Somebody said there's a swimming pool in a Rolls Royce behind the background. Yes, there is. Actually, a closet with junk in it. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff back there. We don't show what's behind this. You don't this want is to like, see what's behind this. This is like <laughs> this is almost like let's make a deal kind of thing here. You know what I mean? It was behind door number one or door number two. <laughs> or this is behind window number one, window number two, or window number three. Oh, that is really funny. Um. Uh, Grandma says she made the sweet potato bars and they were great. Oh, um, how do you here. compare white okra with cow horn? Uh, I no like, comparison. There's no comparison, I'm going to tell you. Uh, to, in my opinion, there's no comparison because the white okra that we have does not have the veins in it like regular okra does. And it just, it, I don't know how to say it. It's just really, really good. Uh, how do I fix the fries and what oil do I use? I use olive oil and I just slice uh, my fries. Go back. You don't just use olive oil. You use first cold pressed yeah. organic olive oil. Yeah. <laughs> e yeah, get all that in. Yeah, EVO. EVOO. EVOO, yes. Y'all know I watch Rachel Ray and he had to... He had to sit through some I Rachel had, Ray I in had, this time. <laughs> well, my wife that passed away, I had to sit through Rachel Ray and uh, what, what was the blonde haired lady's name again? I forgot her name. Um, oh, my goodness. Paula Dean. Paula Dean, yeah. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. I have every cookbook in the house over there that Paula Dean ever made, I think. We've got cookbooks. Oh, here we go. Sue Miller said, did the quince trees I sent you survive? Yes, they're actually planted over at Pecan Grove. They're about they're about this tall. Got green leaves all over them this year. Uh, I had them in pots all winter long, stuck in the pump house over at Pecan Grove. 
And I didn't think that live. One, I didn't think they'd make it, but this spring, is I that the one that's got the? Uh, it looks like it's putting little buds, or either it's got. They're up. They're at Pecan Grove. They're up uh, by the barn up there at the fruit orchard. Oh no no no! This is over uh, by the high tunnel. Out from the high tunnel, there's something there that. It's got little leaves, but it looks like it's putting little buds or something on. I don't know what that is. I asked you today what it was, and you didn't hear me because you were watering. Oh, okay. No, no, I don't know nothing about that. Okay. Is elephant garlic hard to grow? Uh, Gregory says, no, elephant garlic is probably the easiest of all garlics to grow. Um, still, oh, I didn't finish. You messed up. Okay. About what? My fries. I oh my gosh, you anyway. said so much. I don't know how much more you can say. You interrupted me. Okay. I am so sorry. <laughs> you started in with the EVOO thing. <laughs> oh, I did. Yes, I did. You okay. Did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> no, I slice them up like any fries. I take and douse them in olive oil. Now, you don't want to just ha have it dripping off of them, but put olive oil, toss them in it, throw them on your cookie sheet, bake them at about 400 for 15 to 20 minutes according to how crispy you want them. If they're not as crispy as you want them, put them back in there, but they are delicious. It's always salt them. Salt them. Don't always, forget the salt. Yeah. Uh, somebody, Nan Farm has her first Cherokee tan pumpkin coming up. Okay, Jean Blair says, should you, should you bury potato shoots further when they start getting leaves? Never planted them before. Gene, uh, just stick them in the ground about three inches deep, three to four inches deep. That's all you got to do because as the, as the vine begins to run, you're going to want to heal dirt up on them anyway. Uh, so it, it really doesn't matter how deep you put them. As long as it's more than three inches, you're, you're fine. Okay, Phyllis has a good question. She said a neighbor brought her some a big load of cow manure today, and he was unsure if it contained grazon. What would I? What should I do? I have it piled away from my garden beds. Okay, what you want to do, Phyllis, is you want to take you a little old black pot, like little bushes or plants come in, and you want to take that and you want to mix that cow manure up in it, and you want to plant you a, a bean or two seeds in it. And watch that bean when it comes up. If the leaves on it starts to curl up and twist and get all gnarly looking and all, it has grazon in it. But if not, then it should be fine to mix in with your soil. Okay. Um, somebody asked about my t-shirt. Um, it is Love in Faith. Love, L-O-V-E-I-N-F-A-I-T-H. Love in Faith. Okay, now I was going to answer, how are your cows doing now that they are home at Pecan Grove? That was a video we made last year. If you'll watch on the Pecan Grove, I'm still trying to catch people up that didn't see the Patreon videos. Um, it would be, it had 2023. That was when we were building the corral and building everything. And that's when we brought Duke and Trixie. Trixie and Buddy over. And Buddy. And then later we added Hadassah and Shushan. Yeah. And now we've actually added Dolly, Dolly and, and Candy. Candy. Yeah. So we've got quite a few over here now. Uh, I recently heard a zucchini flower, Sheila said. You ever made it? Uh, not zucchini flower, I hadn't. Oh, hey, Ron. Thank you, Ron. Uh, my freeze-dried zucchini I could make flour out of because all I got to do yeah. is crush it up. Yes. And basically, I guess I could use it kind of like that. You can use, you can mash it up and do whatever you want to with it. So, yeah, you could probably use it as flour. I just hadn't thought of that. Earthling Drew says, what's the fish population looking like in the pond? Uh, it depends on which pond you're talking about. We have three <laughs> of them. We have two at, here at Deep South Homestead, one over at Pecan Grove. The one at Pecan Grove is awesome. I mean, they are just multiplying like crazy. Uh, at Deep South Homestead here, we still have a nice population of catfish in the front pond. Uh, the back pond, I'm not 100% sure on that one. I know the carp is still in it, and I know there's some brim in it, but I don't know about the bass. All right, so uh, Brad wants to know, do you keep your pecan trees 
pruned back like apple trees to keep them producing or do you just let them grow if you're trying to run an orchard full of them? Uh, we just let ours go. Now we do cut all the bottom limbs off so that uh, when I go around them with a tractor or anything like that, I don't, you know, I don't get hung up on a limb or something, but anything about 10 foot and lower on the trees, we cut off and anything above that, we just let them go. Uh, they'll take care of themselves. All right, so does pesticides or herbicides affect the taste of produce or fruit? Really and truly, Ronald, no, it doesn't affect the taste of it other, than, it other than just not having the sweetness or the actual taste that it should have. Uh, it's, it's not anything noticeable, though. All right, now Tam asked this. I have tons of little peaches on my tree. Should I take some of the peaches off so I have bigger ones? Tam, what you want to do, if you're concerned about it, is when your peaches get to be about the size of a golf ball, is take you a, a, a stick and put you a piece of, uh, like you, these, these noodle pangs that like kids play in the pool with, or a piece of uh, pipe wrap like you put around PVC pipe and, and tape it around there really good and take that and reach up and just bump the limbs lightly around on that tree. And the peaches that are going to fall off and not be good will go ahead and fall right then. And then that's how I thin mine. I don't just go up and just start pulling peaches off. I just, that's the recommended way is to take that stick with the, uh, with the pipe stuff around it and just bump the limbs lightly and let the ones fall that's just going to fall. Uh, Old Dominion Homestead says, how old is Duke? Duke is, uh, what is, how old is Duke? Duke's a year and a half now? Not eight, he's probably getting close to 18 months. 18 months, 18 to 20 months. Yeah, he's I around. I would say at least. Around 18 to 20 months old. He's a big boy, too. Uh-oh, Randy Pitt says, Danny, I broke down and bought a tractor and equipment. Randy, I don't know what kind you got, but I tell you what. If you've got a place to use it, you will not regret it. Um... Have y'all grown giant Marconi peppers? Yes, we have. We love the Marconi peppers. And I also have some seeds uh, in our seed tray that hadn't come up yet. Of the red roasters. The red roasters. We yeah. love the red roasters too. So I'm trying the red roasters again this year. Where's uh, the best place to purchase Seminole pumpkins? They didn't seem to offer them locally. I don't know about Jay Robinson. I don't know about Seminole. Uh, uh, you were supposed to check on Cherokee Tan. I was. Some people uh, asked, and I didn't get any. If you asked about I am him, so sorry. he hasn't checked, so we've got to see if we have I stay some so that I busy. can send some. But we'll uh, try to do it this week. I'll try to get to it, I promise you. I had three or four people, I think, asked about them. Okay. Uh, Layla's, uh, what is that, Tamales Homestead? Says, I can't find seeded watermelon why probably because the watermelons you're buying was grown in a, in a greenhouse more than likely if they don't have any seeds in them uh, a lot of things are becoming seedless i mean uh i actually have two citrus trees i bought out here uh satsumas that are seedless the arctic uh frost is that what arctic, the, frost, arctic frost i believe i think the paper on them says they're seedless Okay, Cindy's asked this before, and I did see it a while ago. How often should potato plants be watered in a grow bag? Uh, I would not water potatoes in a grow bag more than once a week. Uh, I, and I wouldn't soak it thin. I would just dampen the soil. Potatoes don't need, uh, even though potatoes are like 80% water, they don't need a lot when they're growing uh, just to keep the soil moist because they will rot. Okay, um, any tips for growing weather, growing corn in hot weather in Northern California? Uh, any tips for growing what now? Corn in hot corn. weather in Northern California. Well, plant it early after the danger of all frost is gone and keep it watered like crazy. Because, I mean, uh, Shawana, it's, that's, I, I, that's the only thing I can tell you. All right, Pamela said, I hate to even ask, but do you recommend staying inside on Monday? Oh, no, because let me tell you something. 
Come Monday, very few people in the United States are even going to see the eclipse anyway. Because there's only going to be one spot in the center of the United States, in my understanding, that's even going to have a sky where you can even see it. Now, 90% of the United States at that point where it's crossing it's going to be cloudy. And severe bad weather in lots of places. So, uh, I, I wouldn't panic about that at all. All right, Deborah said she got my cookbook, so I'm glad. Uh, we also heard from several of our uh, winners over the past yes, we couple have. of weeks. I know the lady that got the um, canner let me know. Um, Miss Lippy uh, said she had heard from the one that got Miss Lippy's blends. Will just said several something about them. the uh, encyclopedia a while ago. Yeah, several people let me know they got the encyclopedias, some of Ron uh, Foster's uh -huh. books. Uh, all the things that I sent out. So we're glad that people finally, and the Vego bed, she got it yesterday. Yeah. So I know most everything should have gotten to everybody. So this has been asked, what is your opinion on castor oil and what is the latest interest in castor oil? Uh, castor oil um, is, let's put it this way, when Juan and I was growing up, <laughs> It was it was the go to for everything. You My know? mama had took a, a you remember the Tupperware uh, sugar things that had both sides that open up one for yeah. a spoon and one with a little hole. My mama would sit that on the table in the jar of castor oil and had a big spoon, and she'd pour sugar over in that spoon and then she'd pour castor oil on top of it and she'd say, "Open up." That's my thought on castor oil. Well, I mean, castor oil <laughs> was a was a cure-all when we were growing up. You dare didn't tell your mama, I don't feel good, my stomach's hurting, I don't want to go to school today. Come here, boy. You know? <laughs> Put that castor oil in that mouth. I mean, you would, ooh. Yeah, you learn right quickly. That stuff tastes nasty. Now, the new castor oil is, oh, they got flavored castor oil. It, that's, that's a mockery to the old stuff. Yeah, I don't know if it's like it used to be. Okay. Let's see. Uh, it's weird how the weather forecast are predicted two months in advance about the cloud cover. They can yeah, pretty much kind of tell. Can, they can tell. I mean, Wanda and I, we have people watch the weather for us. It tells us about a month in advance what's going to happen. So, I mean, you, you know... Uh, computer models, AI is running all this stuff now anyway, and AI can see way into the future about what's going to happen. All right, so Miss Jones said she's planted cucumber seeds and they've sprouted but don't seem to be growing. Uh, it probably because it may not be warm enough. Ours is doing the same thing. They're just sitting there, little old bitty plants. It's just, it's just too cool. Uh, right. Janine... Kenlin says, what do you think about CERN? Are you talking about what just happened at CERN, or what do I think about it as a whole? Uh, what I think about it as a whole, I think it's evil, uh, because I know what they're trying to do with it, and it is totally evil. As a matter of fact, if you look up, uh, let me just say this, all countries have a CERN in them. The United States has a CERN here in the United States. There's one in Switzerland. I mean, every country has one. The, the Hydrogen Collider in Sweden over there is, uh, or Switzerland, whichever you want to say it, uh, is, whichever place whichever, is my mind right now has got so much in it, uh, that thing is called the Seat of Satan, it's location, it's, it's just named the Seat of Satan, uh, and they are, they're up to no good, let me put it that way. Okay, so, um. One lady said she hadn't received her Cherokee beans. I think you're in Canada, right? I told you I didn't know if they'd make it or not. Yeah, we didn't they know. They might have got might have got might have got confiscated. Um, let's see, Miss Kathy. She said not to butt in, but I love y'all. Miss Kathy's the one that sends me letters off and on. Oh yeah, and yeah, yeah. And I sent yeah. her a, a book back, and she was yeah. kind of shocked because she wasn't expecting. But I had her address. You have her address. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Be careful when you send me a letter because I have your address. <laughs> Not that we keep all of them. Now we no, don't trust me. But we Ms. don't Kathy keep her. Miss Kathy sends me a letter, a handwritten yeah. letter, and I love reading her letters because she's got a, a wonderful personality. And uh, she makes me laugh when she sends us these letters. Shell's hand says, I haven't received my Cherokee yellow That's the one beans. I just was talking, talking about. about? Okay. Yeah. I think she's in Canada. Okay. That's the only one I know of I sent. 
out of country and it probably didn't get there. Uh, let's, uh, let's see, see. where we at. Castor oil is kind of like mercuricomb. <laughs> yeah, when we grew up, if you got a cut, a scrape, mercuricomb or methylate was on it, you could just rest assured you're going to walk around with a big old red spot on you. <laughs> Believe me, I went to school with them many a time, a red spot. And I wore dresses so you could see my knees and legs. And if and there was a red spot, you saw it. Or if you got up and you had a, sometimes you get an ulcer in your mouth or you bite your mouth inside and you get an ulcer or something like that. And you say, Mom, I got a place in my mouth right here. It's hurting really bad. And you open your mouth up, Mama swab it with that old Jensen Violet. And, and you it go turns to, blue. It turns <laughs> blue and you go to school and your whole mouth looks like you've been eating a purple jawbreaker all day. What kind of rabbits do you have? Uh, we have the Tamuk rabbits. Uh, they were bred at the uh, Texas A&M, I believe is where they came. Texas A&M. Yeah. It's T A M U K. Yeah, T A M U K. If you want to look it up. Uh, they're supposed to be better for our uh -huh. heat, and they yeah. have survived really well last year. As hot as it got, Danny had fans on them, but they still they didn't seem overheated. We haven't bred them because Danny want them mainly for manure, not for Yeah, they're just strictly purposes. for. I ain't got them for breeding purposes. Now we could because we have well, one we male could. and two females. Okay, Danny, how long will we have to deal with these cicadas? Well, until it freezes. Uh, that's about how far it's going to go till it freezes. Which um, is way up into the fall. All right. Uh, oh, let's see here. <laughs> do you know about a... What do you know about a pond turning over? Oh, ponds turn over every year. Uh, what happens is... Uh, they lose their oxygen on the bottom of the pond. In other words, the pond rolls over. Uh, lakes do this. Ponds do that. Uh, it's quite common, mainly when it's uh, in the early spring. Uh, and it's kind of a little bit cool outside still. Lots of times the ponds will flip. Uh, a lot of times you have a, a huge fish die off if it does. I know one time we were at uh, Lake Toledo Bend over next to Texas. And uh, we were going on a white perch fishing trip. And the, the guide told us, says, you're not going to catch anything today. The lake's turning over. And true enough, we only caught like one or two or something like that. But because he was a guide, he already had a bunch caught up. And he gave us a bunch to bring back with us uh, for the, off the trip. All right. Bubba Joe says, what should I add to the soil that hasn't been plowed in years for growing onions? Well, now that's going to really depend on your soil analysis there, Bubba. I mean, you need to do a soil test on it. Uh, and where you live at in the country could tell you, you know, here in the Deep South, I can tell you in the Deep South, if it was here, you'd have to add anywhere between two and three tons of lime per acre. You'd have to add a lot of nitrogen to the soil and a lot of phosphorus and potash in order to get those onions to do good. And you would have to apply nitrogen about once every two weeks to them once you got them growing, up until about two to three weeks before they actually was time to harvest them. Um, I was looking, Destiny Rams said, good night, she's locked on from Trinidad, West Indies. Oh, Hello, wow, Destiny. Hello, from West Indies. All right. Um, uh, Aaron says, are the Tamuk rabbits a meat rabbit? Yes, they are huge. Yeah, I they're mean, very big. They're very, very big. Uh, Danny, do you remember Campo Fanique? Yes. Oh, Lord, yes. Campo Fanique, now believe it or not, Campo Fanique is what my dad and I used to use when we went catfishing. You would take the little miniature marshmallows and you would dip them in. My dad would pour some Campo Fanique in a lid, a little small lid, and we would dip the marshmallows in Campo Fanique and put them on the end of our fishing hook and we would throw them out in a... Uh, fish in a, like that. Oh, catfish love Campo Fanique. <laughs> and, and boy, they would hit that thing every time you hit the water. I mean, now, where my dad learned that from, I have no clue. All right, Ozark Homestead said, can you, use, can you use, I guess, used old sawdust from a meal in the garden? Uh, you can use old rotted sawdust in a garden. Yes, it's not a problem. Uh, as long as it's not all pine. And if it's got some hardwood in it, uh, a pine is okay. But just understand that you may have to up the, uh, the phosphorus and the, uh, the, the nitrogen in it 
you know, even though it's rotted down and it's really good, uh, over next to uh, by me here, I was going to buy a piece of property one time that had a sawmill on it. And, uh, of course, I lost out on the deal, but uh, it had some really, really good sawdust on it. And it made... It makes good garden techniques. Um, but we don't mix. We their... don't. We don't mix their chemicals that they use for their sprays and stuff like that. Because once you but learn, I do have it all. We have everything. I yes. bought everything. We have, have it, it in storage, uh, in the in dry case. form, just in case we need it. But what we normally have done, we found out insect cycles here in uh, at Deep South, and we've learned how companion planting and insect cycles and nutrient dense soil does more to deter insects than you would ever imagine all right what was i thinking homestead mm -hmm. says i'm starting to plant a lot of fruit trees i'm going to use cardboard as a weed barrier do i put compost on top or under i'm adding mulch too i would put it on top of it if it was me uh, i would put it under it and on top of it to be honest with you i would do both now, also, depending on what part of the country you live in, if you live where the uh, where there's fire ants at and you put cardboard down around the trees, you could very well end up with a lot of fire ants around the trees. So be cautious of that. All right. Um, <clears throat> what about using cedar shavings in the garden? No, do not use cedar shavings in your garden. Cedar shavings have an oil in it that even though a lot of people believe it repels insects and stuff like that, it will will not repel termites or anything like that now because termites will still come to your garden. But it's, it's not a good idea because the cedar has oils in it that's not good for a lot of your plants. All right. Uh, can a person make a good living uh, raising rabbits? Well, that depends on if you live next to a big city or something like that that has a lot of restaurants that serve rabbits. Or uh, if you have a, a uh, somebody that likes on a community. A community that, that really that likes them. Uh, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't count on going into business selling rabbits if it was me unless I had a really good, uh, a really good contact. Nan Farm says they bought the companion planting book. Ah, carrots uh, love tomatoes. Is that it? Well, yeah, they well, there's two or three of them. I mean, actually, I think that's it. That may the be carrots one. love companion. I mean, loves tomatoes is one of them. Yeah. Uh, where are we at? Uh, hold on. Ronald Hagen says, Danny, do you feel God's approval rating? What do you feel God's approval rating of us is? Uh, Ronald is probably a negative ten. <laughs> you know, I mean, because our country has done any and everything it can to get rid of God out of everything. And uh, I tell you, I believe, I'm going to be honest with you, I believe right now we are worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. I honestly believe that. I, I really do believe we're worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. How God has allowed us to go on is the only one reason I can think of is because he still has some saints here that he's showing mercy to. I'm just being honest to you, but that time's fixing to run out here very shortly. I will, I can assure you of that. All right. Earthling Drew says, have you researched home scale biogas systems? He just received his, it's organic matter or manure goes into the digester gases captured or stored plus liquid fertilizer for, from the outlet. Uh, yes, I've actually looked at these, uh, um, di I call them digesters because that's what they are. Um, I've looked at them before, but I uh, honestly, I don't have time to do it right now. I'm just being honest. I mean, Wanda and I are busting our tails. Sometimes. Well, it's like today. <laughs> Wanda and I today actually... And I did not get any pictures. And she didn't, well, Wanda and I actually today stopped and sit down for 30 minutes and did nothing, which is highly unusual for us in the middle of the day, just to sit down for 30 minutes and do nothing. We're beginning to learn to chill. Well, we just, the cows was <laughs> running and playing over at Pecan Grove, 
And we sat down and we just sit and watched them run and play. I mean, for like 30 minutes, they run out there bucking and jumping and butting heads and playing. And, and it kind of made me wonder if there's anything going on in the atmosphere because it's, I mean, we have happy cows, but they just seem like they were too happy today. All right, Nana City Garden says she got her soil test back and she was low in sulfur, potassium, iron, and boron. She amended the soil yesterday. So oh. We will wait and see how it does, right? Yes. Uh, keep us posted on your on your uh, 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 your progress there because ours out here, I ain't gonna lie to you, over at Pecan Grove, those things and those Vago beds, guys, they're blowing out the water now. I will say this, we're needing some rain at Pecan Grove and at Deep South Homestead because it is dry as a powder house Yeah, I here. mowed some and it is nothing but a dust bag. Wanda got on the lawnmower over at Pecan Grove and honestly goodness, I couldn't see her on the lawnmower hardly. It, it's bad and we have a lot of grass. Yes. I mean, it, it but it's dusty. Oh my goodness, is it dusty. Um, Ronald Beatty says poplar is a good wood to repel termites. Only the heart of a poplar, not the white part of it. Only the heart of it is. I use the heart of poplar also says we're reconnecting. And the reconnection was says we're reconnecting. And the reconnection was successful. Okay. All right. Maybe I was talking about something I shouldn't have. All right, it says, uh, Dean says, I've heard animals are very happy and loving before an earthquake. Let's hope that Let's ain't Let's hope it. that ain't the truth. <laughs> oh. They've been very happy for a couple of days now. Oh, it's right after I said the Sodom and Gomorrah thing, it started buffering. Really? Yeah. Well, you need to watch what you say. Man. Oh, Miss Nadia wants you to sing the old rugged cross. If I sing the old rugged cross, it'll go blank. No. It probably will. Let me see. see, I have the words right here on my shirt. You could read the words on a hill far away. It's been so long since I sung that song. <laughs> I think you started singing it last week. I was just joking with you. Now, everybody keeps saying, I think it was the Sonata and Gomorrah thing, laugh out loud. Oh, they don't want us talking about that. They said our freezing up with their expressions was so funny, we were probably like, you know, had some kind of weird expression in her mouth. Oh. They said they would sing with you, so sing. Yeah, I can't, yeah. Signal lost. Uh, how do you get rid of potato bugs, Mike says. Okay, Mike. The best thing to get rid of potato bugs is don't use no, di don't use no seven dust or nothing like that. Uh, potato bugs hate radishes. See, they're singing. Uh, so you might want to plant some radishes in amongst your potatoes and don't pull them up when they get boiled. Let them go to seeds. Let them stay there for the full length of time. All right, so Texas Chopper started it on a hill far away. Let's see if y'all can keep it going all the way through, all the words. <laughs> yeah. What caused the power outage on Dolly? Yeah, that's that ship. Uh, well, Debbie, let's just put it this way. The same thing that happens on a computer when you get hacked, um, that's, <laughs> that's, that's more right, unlikely. That's <laughs> well, Ms. Wanda's telling me I can't talk no more. Um. See, they're on it. Somebody stood an old Chevrolet. <laughs> oh, man. The emblem of suffering, suffering and shame. shame. That is the next word. That is. All right. You're going to have to read the words. Baby, I can't. On a hill far away stood an old rugged. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. The emblem of suffering and shame. I can't see the rest of it. Where? It's all wrote inside all that. I can't. I can't read the words. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's all I could see. And it's, uh, it's, it's 
It's well, it's all up inside it there. Right? Yeah, my cross goes across part of it and he, he lost track. Oh. So I'll cling to the old rugged cross. Oh. They're they're finishing it for you. We're the dearest and the best for a world of lost sinners was lost. Okay. Was slain. Okay. All right. Okay. And I'll exchange it someday for a, for a crown. crown. I, I used took, to do sign language. I took lessons for a little while, yeah. but y'all, it, it was getting difficult because I would say something mm -hmm. and it had a different meaning if you me messed one finger or, or something up. And I was like, okay, I yeah. quit. Yeah, I used to have a friend who was a deaf mute and uh, he, he was so funny. I mean, he was hilarious to be around you would not think somebody who was a deaf mute could be that funny but but he was he was hilarious yeah i got to meet him a couple of times yeah actually his uh his doctor was one of miss wanda's really good friends nurse nurse i'm sorry his nurse yeah yeah she came and uh came to our church and uh sang and sign language for him one sunday okay um because she did sign language. <laughs> yes. She was. She actually had met him many years before when he went to a different church, and she was the one that did sign language for him during the service so that he knew what the preacher was saying because she interpreted for uh, deaf people during church services. Darlene Wright says, Opinion on a fig tree in a large pot, yay or nay? Uh, yay if you keep it pruned. Nay if you don't keep it pruned. Um, Danny... Am I remembering correctly that if I plant my potatoes in a container, I don't have to wait for the proper phase of the moon? That is correct. If you do not, if you plant them in a container, you don't really have to wait. But if you're planting them in the earth, you want to wait till the at least 24-hour period after the full moon till the moon begins to start its waning point. Miss Darlene singing another song on the wings of a snow white dove. On the wings of a snow white dove. <laughs> okay, I remember that one. Your sweet love. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see here. Miss Delma said that she loves the old hymns. It reminds of her dear old mom mm -hmm. as she would cook and clean. She oh, would sing okay. while she cooked and cleaned. Oh. Uh, Char says you, you they will have to watch what T-shirt we wear that I wear. Do I have an Elvis one? No, I really no, don't. No, she don't have a. I uh, did have a um, Jeff Bates, and uh, I finally threw it away recently. But I've had Jeff Bates T-shirt for close to fifteen years. Uh, one of my daughters went, or both my daughters may have went to a concert, and they brought me back the T-shirt. Yeah. Because Jeff Bates was um, raised right next to my uncle, and my uncle taught him to play the guitar, and he and my cousin were best friends. I don't remember him because he's a little younger than I was, but uh, yeah, they said he was around all the time. I just don't remember who he was until he got famous. Let's see. Ronald says, are the Amish allowed to use firearms? Not if they use them in a way of violence. They are not allowed to use them. If one of them joins the military, they ask not to be put where they have to use firearms. There'll be mechanics and stuff like that in the military. They don't mind that, but they will not. They don't believe in taking the life of another person. Elvis is still in the pond, but he, he moved to Pecan Grove. Him and some of the ducks, not all the ducks, but some of the ducks are at Pecan Grove. And... uh Yes. They're floating around in that one. They right? are. Uh, when do I know when to harvest garlic, Kathleen says. Uh, when, the, when the bottom leaves on it start turning yellow and dying down and, and, and drooping down uh, and the plant begins to show a yellowish look to it, you can, you can pull it at that point. But now don't, don't cut it off. Let it hang and leave the stalk on it. Let it dry with the stalk on it in a place where it won't get wet cul-de-sac says my granny was a song leader in her church back in the day before it was a whole stage production yeah uh nikki's nook says prayer request i have shingles oh bless your heart them Ooh. things are so painful it depends on where you have them at on your body i've seen people have them in their hair i've seen them have it on their chest i've seen them have it on their back um danny your last porch time was awesome thank you thank uh, you you are Mary. welcome 
Oh. Uh, do we grow, Donald says, do we grow any herbs? Do we grow herbs? We are. We have more herbs than probably the store does. Between both places, we have just about any variety. Uh, quite, a, quite a supply of herbs. Lots and lots of herbs. Anything from... Plus wild herbs, tame herbs. Yeah. Herb All herbs. Kind of stuff in the... Yeah, we got herbs running out right here. Anything from... Uh, what is that in the backyard I can't get rid of? Uh, oh, yarrow. Yarrow, yeah. Yarrow grows all in our backyard, all over everywhere, and it just keeps spreading, and I keep mowing it down. It keeps spreading. <laughs> I love Sonori yeah. says, how would you plant carrots? I have a book I've wrote, or a manual I've wrote on planting carrots over on our Etsy store, uh, deepsouthhomestead.etsy.com. I tell all about how to plant carrots. It's almost 100% foolproof. Uh, a lot of print requests going up. Oh, let's see. Deborah Davison said that Jeff Bates was the officiant of her wedding. Wow, he is a wonderful guy. He has a great personality. My aunt, my uncle taught him to play the guitar when he was young. So every time when he was coming back through where they lived, and... Uh, which was called Bunker Hill. Yep, Bunker Hill. Uh, know it very well. He would stop at my aunt's house. He would have the tour bus come through, stop it, and... We're back. Ah, uh, it's going to get bad. Okay. Um, yes, we have a lot, a lot of videos on carrots. Have you done any sewing lately? I have not sewed anything in many years. Oh, man. When I was young, I did make my a lot of my clothes and some of the kids clothes and stuff and then i found it was cheaper just to run to the dollar store and buy shorts and tank tops and it was try to build stuff and uh, i have my mom's sewing machine but danny and i've tried a couple of times and i it's way beyond my pay grade i was used to the old-fashioned guy yeah. and lackey says yarrow as a poultice i believe stops bleeding a yarrow was used during the yes. civil war time um, on soldiers and stuff like that, just packed in the wounds, the yarrow does have a, 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 a coagulating ingredient in it that does stop but bleeding. But we are not doctors. But I am not a doctor. I'm not telling you to go do that. I'm just telling you it it happens. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Um, Mark Lowry does a live nearly every day of old hymns. Yeah. Mark Lowry is one funny guy. Mark Lowry is I love huge. To hear him. I mean, he's hilarious. I love to hear him sing, but he yeah. is a great comedian, too. Been around for a long, long time. Catherine says, happy birthday to my husband tomorrow. Happy birthday, Happy birthday, husband. husband. I don't know who you are, but happy birthday. <laughs> uh, is elderberry really that healthy for you, and how much would you take? I don't take anything all the time. Elderberry we is a good... If you make it, up it, the syrup or something for when you, you have cold, you got a cold or the flu or something sore throats like that. and yeah. different stuff. Uh, any can well, I'm I'm telling people advice. I, that's not good. I'm not telling you advice. I'm just saying it has yeah. properties that might help in some way, shape, or yeah. form. Yeah. Um, okay, we are at after nine o'clock. Yes, we are. We got to. We got. We got to, a lot of prayer requests that went up. Yeah. And, uh, Uh, Reef, Reflex says you can hum songs if you want to. <laughs> yeah. uh, he doesn't hum as much as he sings about one line or two lines of songs a lot of times. Yeah. Um, My photographic memory is beginning to fade as I age. Yes, very much so. I've noticed it a lot here lately. Yeah, my, I'm, I'm starting to not remember everything as well as I used to. All right. So. Okay. We're going to have a prayer. Oh, and... look at my hair. Don't you love my hair? No. Look at my hair. Look you love this. that. That's what happens after you take a bath. Your hair just, <laughs> your hair becomes like a baby's hair. No, it's, it looks like you just It's like up. the Three Stooges. Oh, I can tell him what he done. He, he was sleeping and his hair was all messed up. <laughs> yeah, my hair, when I got out of the shower, uh, uh, what is it? My hair was wet and I went and laid down and man, my hair just went <laughs> like Bozo the Clown when I got up. <laughs> Anyway, okay, Father, we uh, we come to you tonight, Lord, thanking you for such a great time together tonight. And man, time flew by tonight. Seems like we just started, but you know what? When you have fun and you have good fellowship, that's what happens. 
Time means nothing. So, Father, we do appreciate that tonight. A lot of people have put up a lot of prayer requests tonight. Uh, a lot of people need some help, Father. Uh, so what we're doing is we're stepping in on their behalf and we're raising up their requests before you and asking that if you would, in the name of Christ, to answer all of these requests that's been mentioned here tonight. Um, some have to do with physical issues. Some have to do with, you know, mental issues. Lord, lots of people right now are struggling financially and people are unsure about the future of our country and people are unsure about lots of things right now in their lives and and rightfully so, Father. You've told us a lot of things about these latter days and it, it's a little bit difficult sometimes to live here, but we know that if you created us in this particular point in time in history, you will give us the grace to get through it, Father, with all things that we're facing. So continue to love us, continue to, to just help us to be able to support ourselves, Father. And we do pray for the wisdom and the understanding as these days come by, you, you have said in your scriptures, you will do nothing without first letting your saints know. So, Father, uh, before you allow anything to happen here upon this earth that deals with the end of time and the end of ages that we live in, make sure, Father, that you don't forget us now and you, you remind us of all the things that we're going to be seeing and that we're going to be going through, Father. So we love you, we appreciate you, and ask that you forgive us now. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. All right. Ah. Man, okay. man, man. They're going to want to tip, you know that. Yeah, what was we talking about earlier? Don't tell me you don't remember. Uh, which one? Psalms 91. I know that. I knew we were talking about that, but I was like, wasn't there something else we were talking about? I don't remember, but I remember Psalms 91. I know, I know about that one. Um, My legs are starting to hurt. Yeah. Prayers for Gideon's young boy with cancer. Multiple times, it says. Um, oh. uh, my uncle died in a fire saving a man. And it was in a burning building. Wow. There's nothing better than a man give his life for another person, though. People's wanting to tip, 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 tip. Well. Do we pray together regularly? Yes. yes. Every day. Every day. Every we started day. praying together the night we first started talking on the phone. Yes, we did. Um, I asked him before we got off the phone that night, I said, look, I would like to know if you would pray with me. And he said, sure. Sure. And from that point on, I actually went to sleep one night. She did. She went to sleep one night while I was praying <laughs> over the phone. And I, kept, I said, Wanda, are you still there? Wanda? All I could hear was, you know, on the other end. I woke up sometime later and the phone was still laying there. And yep. I'm like, oh, I'm so embarrassed because we had not even met at that time. We had never met face to face. And I'm like, a woman went to sleep on me while I'm praying to God? I'm like, but we've been talking like four or five we have, hours. We have been talking like four hours, yeah. yeah and I, I could just picture her on the other end. She was laying back with her head back against a pillow and had the phone probably laying on her chest up here somewhere just talking. And she just dozed off, you know. <laughs> I said, now thou, she says, I'm an entertaining person. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway. Don't... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Darlene says, I have a tip. Don't eat mint out of a urinal. That, I would have to say that's a good tip. That's a really, really good tip. Uh, anyway, I've, I got, I've been trying to figure out how to say some things because I could really get in trouble. And I'm trying to find the right words. I, I don't even know how to say this in a parable or... Any other way. Uh, point blank is the only way I really know how to say anything. But uh, the word floating around out there is that there might be some event take place that uh, if you come in contact with it, it might you might not last any longer than 72 to 
90, no, you wouldn't know that you have any. You wouldn't symptoms. know you have any symptoms for the first 48 hours. Let's put it that way. Yeah. You wouldn't have. You just feel completely normal for I the don't first know how 48 long it hours. Last after that. But after that, there is actually no antidote for it, and you would uh, you would pass away. So you know, after we heard that. You know, I gave you, I've been giving y'all tips. We've known this for a while, but I've been trying to figure out how to tell y'all. I've been telling you, stay away from big crowds because uh, that's how it'll probably come about, is in large crowds. Uh, like Mainly, you don't want to be hugging on everybody. You don't, don't be to, touching. Especially don't, people you don't even know who they are. Right, don't be letting <laughs> people brush up against you. That's why you don't need to be where there's... Lots of people congregated together at like ball games and uh, like this eclipse thing coming through and all that kind of stuff like that. You can watch it without a crowd. Uh, and and it, actually, it's been on TV. A friend of mine today told me they saw that on TV, and I couldn't believe warning it. Warning people. Warning people on television. Now we don't watch TV, but it kind of shocked me that they actually put that out there. I mean, we had heard it, you know, several weeks ago, but uh, it's kind of. Uh, in other words, let's put it this way. They're saying it's almost a guaranteed thing. They just don't know when. So that's why they're warning people to not uh, not to be in crowded places. And now, now on TV, this person told me, they said ball games, uh, church, services. church services even. And, but they uh, think a lot of churches are huge churches. So right. you go to mega churches, yeah, I get it. But... Uh, Especially when you don't know a lot of people that just come in the door. You have lots of visitors and things like that, I think. Yeah, I mean, so, um, so I mean, this is what, uh, I'm going to use the word allegedly, uh, because if I don't, I get in trouble. Uh, so, you know, this is allegedly what's being talked about out there. And, uh, and after one and I, you know, we've known about this for quite a while, and we sit back and all of a sudden, like this morning, well, actually several mornings in a row, I'm just going to be honest, several mornings in a row, God has woke me up at like 3 o'clock in the morning. Or I have woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I wasn't going to say. somebody gave me the. And, and I kept saying, Lord, why am I waking up? Why am I waking up? And I just never was getting no answers. And then Wanda was sent a uh, particular Bible passage yes, to look at yesterday. And me and her talked about it. And this morning when I got up at 3 o'clock, I was wide awake. I said, Lord, could it be that passage? So I pulled up that passage and I got out my Bible and I looked at it. And I read it over and over and over. And Lord, I said, Lord, I know this passage like the back of my hand. I said, and, and as I began to look into it, it's Psalm 91. Uh, the Lord began to speak to my heart this morning, where it talked, where David, where, where it was talking, where David was talking there, and he said, a, "A thousand will fall by one by your side, and tens of thousands will fall at your right hand." And I got to thinking about that. We always think about David being a mighty warrior; that he was killing a thousand over here, and by his right hand he was killing ten thousand. But no, the Bible. I went back and looked at the wording. It says, "A thousand will fall by your side." And a 10,000 by your right hand will fall. And again, I began to think about that. I was like, wait a minute, that's just people dying. Tens of thousands of people dying. And then I began to think about what we had been told about this issue that once you contact it, you're going to die. And, it, and I began to resonate with me. Lord, I said, are you trying to tell me that we're going to see massive amounts of people that are just going to pass away because of this, and then as I began to read on down into it, he began to assure me that if we do and keep his, keep his name holy, keep him in the proper place in our life, that no plague, and then there was the other key. He says, no plague will come nigh unto thy dwelling place. And he also turned around and he says, I will give my angels charge over you. That, right there, sealed the deal for me. We are going to face something in this country, and we're going to see a lot of loss of life. But if we hold our faith, and we do not turn our backs upon the Lord, 
then we are guaranteed by Psalm 91, the Lord makes a promise to us. If you claim that promise, he's not going to let this come nigh to your dwelling place. He is not, he's going to give his angels charge over us unless at anything something comes up against us, they're going to be there to protect us. And he's going to see us through without any problems. It that, doesn't mean that you're not going to have problems. You're not right. going to get sick. You're not, it doesn't mean that. But he will take you through it. A lot of people think that they will be protected from everything. Yes. And that's not what that scripture said. It says they will... Uh, they will bear you bear up. Bear you through it. They'll bear you up. In other words, you, yeah. if, you, if you're down, they will bear you up. Yeah. And yes, uh, somebody asked us, it has, are we, will people be dying over illnesses? Yes, the answer is... In other words, what we were told is that the big C <laughs> will be like a walk in the park compared to what is coming. So that's why it's going to be so important. And I'm not trying to tell you don't go nowhere and don't do nothing or anything like that. Don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid of that. And first of all, don't be afraid of dying because if you know your eternal destination, death should mean nothing to you. But I mean, you, you got to just use some wisdom because it's coming from countries that don't like us, you know? Yeah, and Psalms 91 is just a reiteration of what we were feeling anyway, that God would take us through whatever. Yeah. It do doesn't mean that we might have, you know, we could have crop failures, we could have um, sickness, we could not have money to do stuff. You know, things can happen in any way, shape, or form to anybody. And it doesn't mean we're not going to have that stuff. But it means on the other side, God will take us through it and he'll show us what we need to do if, if we had a crop failure. He'll right. show us what we need to do to get through it to the next step and things like that. So I think not spazzing over stuff is one thing uh, to take a step back and watch the situation more than jumping out in the middle of it and being right in it is, is yeah. kind of what, what I get out of it. Uh, anyway, um, I'm, I'm kind of new, uh, who says, I'm, I'm pleased to have Pamela Caldwell says, I'm new to this chat. Great chat, Danny Wonder. Y'all are absolutely awesome. Thank, Thank you, you, Pamela. Pamela. Um, the sad part about this is if you contact this, there is no getting over it. See, that is the sad part about it. There, it doesn't matter how many vitamins you take. It doesn't matter how much whatever you take or how healthy you are, it is, you're not going to get over it. You know, I mean, that's going to, that's the sad part about it. Yeah. All right. So that is his tip for tonight. Yes. Uh, everybody read Psalms read 91. Read Psalm 91, pray over it, claim it, do whatever you got to do because it's going, it, it is, it is a proclamation of our future guys. Um, there's lots of stuff hidden within the words of that. Uh, it's keep your faith. Do not lose your faith. David made the Lord his high place. He made the Lord his place, his dwelling place. In other words, that's what was reiterated all, re all the way through Psalm 91 is how David made the Lord his, uh, his high place, his, um, his, his place of shelter. Um, the Lord even told, uh, talked about in there and said, I will even clutch you up under my feathers uh, like a mother hen does her baby chicks is what he was trying to say in there. She protected them and God said, I will keep you under my wings. I will protect you. All right. Thanks, All right, guys, thanks for stopping guys. by. 